Hey fellow fantasies, it's me, Claire, and welcome to another off-season episode. I will be sharing my review of the movie The Idea of You, which stars Anne Hathaway and Nicholas Galitzi. This movie is actually based on a book by Robin Lee. It was published around 2017, and a lot of people actually know about this as a Harry Styles fan fiction. But actually, when I read some of the articles on it, um, the author said that it was not exactly a fan fiction, but something she wrote wherein the main character was inspired by Harry Styles. It's not necessarily fan fiction about him. And a lot of people have this misconception that this movie or this story is inspired by Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles' relationship. But the book was written way before that. So it doesn't really have a connection with the real relationship. So anyway, the story is about an older woman and a younger man. The older woman is a divorcee. Her name is Solène Marchand. And she is about to turn 40 when she meets Hayes Campbell, who is 24 and is uh, the lead vocalist of a boy band named August Moon. I've actually read the book and there are some differences between the book and the movie. But for this episode, I will just be concentrating on the movie itself. So the story starts with Solène having to go to Coachella with her daughter and her friends because her ex-husband had gotten her tickets to see August Moon, which was a boy band that Izzy, the daughter, was a fan of back in seventh grade. It seems like the dad didn't really know that she wasn't a fan anymore. So he got her tickets and he got her a VIP pass and a meet and greet and all that stuff. While the daughter didn't really like the band anymore, it was still Coachella, so they all went. So Len wasn't supposed to go with them. It was supposed to be Daniel, the ex-husband, but then he had something come up and he she had to take his place. So when they got to Coachella, Solen accidentally met Hayes because she was looking for the bathroom. And that was when, I guess, Hayes became interested in her because she wasn't really that interested in him at first. Number one, she didn't even know who he was, which I think is part of the, the appeal. And of course, she's older, so she doesn't really fawn over him even if he's good looking and rich and famous and all that. So anyway, so they meet in his trailer and then they meet again in the meet and greet. And during the meet and greet, one of Izzy's friends happens to mention that Selene owns an art gallery, which is what Hayes uses to get a chance to see her again later on. Anyway, so in the concert, it's really very One Direction. The boy band sounded like One Direction. And according to some of the articles, the songs were written specifically for the movie itself, for the August Moon Band, and that Nicholas Gallet scene actually recorded the songs himself. The other guys didn't really sing. It was just Nicholas. And they had this set of songs. And for some reason they all sounded like One Direction which was an interesting take I mean the guy who wrote the songs was actually a songwriter and producer for One Direction in the past I guess they tried to stay true to it being inspired by Harry Styles so they did that so anyway during the concert there, there was this part where Hayes was supposed to sing another song with the group but then he asked them to stop and to change the song during the set and he said that this was because he met a girl a woman and it was obviously referring to Selene this song called Closer to You I think and there was this line there that says that the woman was older so of course everybody I mean I thought it was for Solène Solène thought it was for her and she was actually charmed by that so but that was but pretty much that was where it ended I mean they didn't really talk to each other after that concert so later Solène is celebrating her 40th birthday so they were talking about being 40 and one of her friends actually had this really nice line that said you're not really a complete person until you turn 30 and then you spend the next 10 years is trying to figure out who you want to be which as someone who's already in her 40s I think that was really accurate and I also think it somewhat feels unfair for us in this age where people already say that you know you're too old or you're a senior citizen or you're a geriatric or something like that because this is the age where you're really just trying to enjoy your life already but you can't say that you're over the hill or everything's downhill from here because we're still enjoying our lives and we're still and we're still trying to make the most of everything and I think that's the thing that they were trying to show in the movie because with Selene after her divorce and being in her 40s it was her chance to really start over and learn more about herself and what she wanted in her life and it's unfair that as a woman there's always this stereotype that when you reach that age it's over you know i think this is something that's repeatedly mentioned in in the movie or insinuated at the very least so anyway during the party it was funny it was 
like she was being matched to all these single guys during the party guys who were her age and she didn't click with any of them so i guess that was a little frustrating for her then cut to the next scene Selene is at work and then Hayes happens to stop by and he comes in buys everything in the gallery and then he asks if there's more and they go to a warehouse and he tries to get to know her while they're checking out the art one of my favorite parts from that scene was when he was trying to share his story he was trying to get to know her and then she was very upfront about saying so what what is this what's going on I mean I think that's something that younger women would not be brave enough to ask a guy especially a guy like him but she was very upfront and I guess that's something that comes with being older and being more mature which I think was something that he's really liked about her because she wasn't playing games I mean at that age all bets are off you don't play games anymore let's be honest so then he says that he wants to get to know her better because he's interested they decide to later go to her house to have a sandwich and again they got to know each other better they were talking about trust issues because Selene was divorced and her husband cheated on her with a younger woman and then Hayes was telling her the story about his divorced parents and how it was hard for him to trust again because his dad lost contact with him until he became famous and his mom remarried and married someone that he didn't trust either so I guess there were two people with trust issues who were trying to find a way to trust again something like that moving on Hayes during that time at the house was the first steamy moment of the movie actually this is weird because they rated it R but I didn't really find it very the intimate moments are rated it was it was fine was it wasn't too much for me to think that it should have been rated R I mean that's just me I like the intimate scenes they had because for some reason they had this softness to it like Hayes was very gentle with with Selene and I think I guess I was a little bit surprised because for someone who is supposedly younger at 24 you'd think that he'd be a little bit more aggressive but I love the control and how gentle he was with her the softness with how he handled her how he touched her I think that made the story and the buildup of emotions more intense which was really good because it made the stakes higher for both characters I think so anyway they kissed she said I'm too old for you and he said no and then she said I could be your mother and he says but you're not and which was you know it's the insecurity of being older that makes her say that because we are always in our society we're always saying that when the woman is older she could be your mom but people don't say that about guys who are dating younger women which is unfair and she was just I I guess it's because it's part of her the stereotype and it's already ingrained in all of us so she was just trying to fend him off by telling him you know because it's scary I mean it's scary enough to be dealing with that with a younger guy but to be dealing with that with a younger guy who is actually a very famous guy who a lot of women are in love with that's even scarier so anyway she says that I can't do this and then he leaves the house but what he does that's interesting is he leaves his watch and that means that there's a reason for her to go and see him which she does he is in new york and he texts her to join him and she does and there we have another intimate scene which was again very gentle very very intimate very intense but still not as rated R as what people might think I mean it's okay she stays the night and then it turns into a whole European tour he convinces her to go with him and he tells people that she's his art consultant they travel together they enjoy their time in Europe together and at some point August Moon has a weekend break so he Hayes and another one of his bandmates decide to rent a house in France and when they're there that's when the whole age gap thing and the whole ordinary person boy bander thing really hits hard for Selene. She finds herself feeling very awkward around the other girls who are with them, the girlfriends or the people that the other boy banders were dating because they were very young. So she feels awkward, she feels insecure and then she later finds out that that whole thing where he changed the song to Closer to You during Coachella was actually a bit that they always do in their shows. So it was what first attracted her to him in the first place. And she felt lied to. She felt cheated. It's like all of this shouldn't have happened if you didn't do that. So she just, I guess, it became too much for her. So she decided to leave. It, it was it was a really good scene for me because you could see Hayes was teary-eyed. You could see the emotions on his face, but none of them were shouting at 
each other. You can tell that they really care about each other, but and they were both hurting. And that was really cute and really sad at the same time. So they break up, and the bad part was when they split up, that was when the press got wind of everything and they published everything online. So there was a big stigma about, you know, Salen being older and it was difficult for her but surprisingly enough her daughter actually encouraged Salen to get back together with Hayes saying that you know we can handle this we can do this I'll be here for you I'll support even Salen's friends were there and being supportive well the ex wasn't of course and he was really very annoying about it um, he kept on saying things to Salen and to Hayes about how their relationship is not right because she's older he's younger I mean the audacity he cheated on her with a younger woman like it's okay for a guy to do that but for a girl it's not that's not fair anyway so they got back they got back together but again it was too much for Izzy the daughter because she was getting bullied in school for her mom having a much younger and very popular boyfriend so Solen decided that she really needed to put her daughter first and she split up with Hayes again Hayes couldn't accept it and he asked that she give him five years he was saying within five years her daughter would have graduated from school and she would be living a life of her own so she won't get bullied anymore and by then he was pretty much sure that he wouldn't be as famous or be in a boy band anymore so he said give me five years and let's revisit this please and Solen was like I I can give you five years but if you find someone if we both find someone to love within those five years we should take the chance and you know forget about what happened so he, they both agreed they both lived their lives. And so after five years, Hayes comes to see Solen again at the gallery. And they just smile at each other. And you know that they were going to be starting over again. And the end. I, I was expecting much more from the movie because they were saying that Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 100% rating. So I was expecting something amazing. But it was okay. I mean, it's not bad. And it's not overwhelmingly good. But it was entertaining. And I like how the story never really went extremely dramatic or cheesy despite the story being about a boy band and i thought that Anne and nicholas had this really good chemistry i mean people were saying that they don't have chemistry at all but i i have to disagree i mean they were intense when they were really together and those intimate scenes it was just beautiful for me it was i love that they tackled not just the age gap romance and how it was unfair for women to have this stigma for dating someone younger while men did not but i also like the fact that Solen mentioned something about you know not being sure if she liked him or if she liked the idea of him which to be fair is something that is very realistic i mean did she really like him him or did she like him because it's exciting to be with someone younger and to be with someone who was famous as he was i also love this line from Solen where she said i didn't know that being happy would piss a lot of people off which is, again, something I think that a lot of women experience. It's like when there are successful, happy women, there's always someone there to put them down more often than men. I think women experience this more often than men do. And I like that she was able to say that in the movie. And that I was like, yes, I agree. That's so true. I know a lot of people are divided about the movie because they think that it's, I guess, because most younger people would say that she's too old to be in that kind of relationship, which I feel is wrong for people to say when they let, when they give men free pass to do that to do exactly that and i guess that's one of the reasons why people hate it because i see it in the comments of um, reaction videos about the movie they're saying that oh because she's too old she's a grandma and i mean 40 is not a grandma excuse me excuse you i kind of like this concept of the older woman younger man with the younger man being um, with a younger man being a celebrity or an, a boy bander. I think this is something that a K-drama would do a really good story about if they did have a job. I would love to see a K-drama that will tackle the sim a similar story about an older woman and a younger man who is famous. I think a lot of Delulu K-pop fans would love that. I mean, they already have the idol and same age girl with Lovely Runner actually playing right now. So it would be nice to see an older woman and a younger guy who's an idol be in a drama like this. I would love to see Wanu of Seventeen or maybe V of BTS play someone similar to Hayes Campbell and then have someone older to play his love interest like maybe Son Ye Jin or some, someone similar. And 
I, I, I just think that would be really nice. I would love to see that. Maybe even if, maybe even Mingyu. I think he appeared on a, in a TV series in Thailand before. I think he could act. Could probably do that too. I remember there was this part in the art gallery where I was thinking, oh my goodness, Namjoon is that you? I kept thinking about boy bands, K-pop idols when I was watching it. And I would really love to see a Korean version of this as a K-drama. Seriously, I would. I think that would be great. One thing's for sure, this movie just kept the whole deluluness, <laughs> deluluness that we have as K-pop stands alive. It's a great what if. And it was very interesting. It was almost two hours, a two hour movie. Should you watch the movie or not? If you're a fan of K-pop idols and boy bands, you would probably be interested in watching a big what if like this, especially if you're older. <laughs> especially if you're older and it's really not not bad it's a rom- i wouldn't really call it a romantic comedy it's a romantic movie and it's really good it's entertaining enough and i guess i wish there could be more k-drama version please 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 amazon do something about this uh, so anyway that's it um that is my off-season episode and i hope that you enjoyed it and that you can catch us again next time on the regular season of the fantasy house podcast thank you again everyone for watching and listening and i hope to see you again soon bye